Hey guys, welcome to the second master study demo for lines. In this video, I'm gonna be studying an inker. His name is Robert De La Torre, and he is one of my favorite inkers of all time. He's a living inker, he's active now. He's actually doing the new Conan comic. So very good stuff from him. If you wanna follow him, I'll have a link to his Instagram below. I'm gonna show you two things that are different from the first demo. One is, this is an inking, so I'm using a different tool to study the lines. Um, so I'm not going to try to replicate the lines exactly, but I will try to get the things I like about their lines and transfer it over into my drawing style. And the second thing is that I'm not going to do the entire drawing. Instead, I'm going to do little areas. I'm gonna do just the heads. That way I could do a bunch of little studies of key areas that I really like instead of spending time on areas that I'm not interested in that don't maybe excite me. Yeah, just doing a bunch of little heads or ears or whatever it is that I think is cool about the drawing is a great way to get more mileage in less time. But before I begin the actual study, I'm gonna warm up my hand and also just kind of look at the drawing, observe it, see what kind of lines I'm gonna have to draw and maybe just practice getting those kinds of lines on my page. So he's got a lot of really thick to thin, a lot of small thick to thin lines. I mean, he uses a brush, so clearly he can get that. I might have to construct some of those, you know, like, which is totally fine. Like, you know, if you watch David Finch's course that he has here, he does that all the time. So he's an inker, he draws, and you'll see when he draws his comic page panels, he'll start with just drawing of the outlines, you know, with very consistent line weight, but then he'll go back through and build up the line quality and he'll construct the lines because he's specifically trying to build up the line quality in order for the inker, whoever it happens to be that his drawing gets passed to, can then do that same thing with a brush or a pen or whatever they're using. But he has to indicate the line thickness and quality with his pencil and so he constructs it. He, he's very deliberate with it, right? So, he, you know, there I am just constructing various thicknesses of lines, very just random here, but just to show you. But Robert, yeah, Robert has a lot of like thin to thick to thin like this. And so I wanna practice getting those shapes that are constructed and then things pulled out from them. Lots of little things like that. Where lines are really close to each other and they're touching here, but then they get thinner as they come out. And so they kind of create this gradation, this transition from dark to light. He is indicating tone, but it is so linear here that I think it's okay at this stage for us to be copying the lines, even though they're all so closely packed together that they are indicating like a full on shadow. But yeah, they're, they're so linear that we don't have to be thinking of shadows. We could literally just be looking at their lines. And then he does have areas where I'm probably gonna have to use the side of my pencil because they're just so thick and they cover large spaces like the darks of the hair you know, and I still want to kind of keep these kinds of like loose, very gestural, very kind of action movement packed lines, but they all kind of come together into this big mass, right? But we're still seeing his individual brush strokes and the, the, the movement of them. Occasionally coming back in with the tip. Okay. Anyway, I think I'm warmed up. I'm going to move on to the drawing. And again, I'm going to do three of these. I'm going to do them on the same page, but I'm only going to do the heads. I'll probably include the, the whatever, the, the necklace thing, whatever that is under him as well, but I'll stop at that point. And I know myself, I, I always drag my hand across, so I don't want to start on the right side and then while drawing here be smudging this one. So I'm going to start top left and then work my way across just because I know I'm gonna smudge it if I do that. So the first lines I'm gonna do are just laying this in, just getting my shapes in there so I could have some confidence to just put things where they're gonna go. So lightly mapping in the shape. This is the opening where we're seeing his face.
And just like with the last one, I'm not too worried about exact proportions. I just don't want to be so far off that it ruins the drawing, but I'm not trying to get it to be like a perfect replica. I'm mainly studying the lines. So in here he's got the, this like muzzle shape and that's creating a shape from the muzzle up and over to the cheekbone and I'm just mapping that in quickly just so I know the placement. I'm not trying to copy the lines right now, just get the placement in there roughly so that then I can go in and study each individual line and not have to think too much about proportions at that point. There's one thing that I want to make sure I get in the right spot, it's the eyes. Because if I get them just a little bit off, it just makes the whole thing look weird. People are pretty good at catching when the eyes are off in your drawing. You know, non-artists will just be like, what's wrong with that person's eyes? You, know, you don't have to really be good at proportion to catch that. Okay, so that, I think that's actually good enough for my lay-in. Now I'm going to pick a spot and just go at it. And yeah, I'm going to start with the horn. So we got nice thin to thick to thin right there. And then in here, so he's got a lot of very loose gestural lines for the hair. I'm not going to try to replicate each one. I want to just get the feeling of it. Like if he were to do that same area, he would do it very differently. He would just go in and kind of quickly get the flow of the hair. So I'm just going to kind of look at it. Like generally, what am I seeing? And then I'm going to use the side and try to get that same, the same look. So he's got areas where there's kind of clumps of hair. Yeah, and see how that was right there was one stroke and it kind of looks like something he would get with a brush. I'm trying to replicate a brush with this. And if you don't get it in one, one stroke, that's fine. You can come back in and construct it. And then this whole area filled in pretty, pretty flat, but he does have right up here some broken, like just a bunch of lines. So we'll, let's start with that. 
I'm gonna fill this in. You know, one big difference between mine and his here is gonna be just the value. You know, with the ink, he's getting pure black every time. I'm getting a more variety in my value, which is just, you know, that's just the nature of the tool. So I'm not too worried about that. Maybe after I'll, I'll bring it into Photoshop and I'll push the contrast to show you how, you know, in post you could make your pencil drawing look more like an ink drawing. And it's interesting that like the rhythm, the shape is going this way. But now that I'm looking at it, look, trying to study his lines, I'm seeing that a lot of his lines are actually going across across the form and that kind of gives it that feeling of three-dimensional form see because he's wrapping his lines over the cheekbone instead of across where the shape is which would look more like an outline but these lines look more like gradations now and then he has yeah even these little look marks across the form this way Yeah, a few little differences in here between his lines and, and my lines, but just uh, now I actually don't like my mine. See, mine are repeating too much. It's like one, two, three, four of the exact same thing. His have more variety. I'm gonna. Yeah, one, two three flicks here and then they start going up a little bit more smaller and more separated as they go and yeah it's like he he occasionally breaks up his edge with like these little flick marks that gives it more of a rough kind of organic feel As I'm going, I'm starting to kind of get the hang of it. I've done probably a few hundred lines at this point, and I'm starting to get more comfortable with that type of line. So it's kind of nice. Like I'm starting to feel like I could design my own little shape that is inspired by his, trying to still capture what he's doing, but get more into the mindset of it instead of trying to literally replicate it. That way I can capture his confidence because I am going in there executing like my own line. So I'm kind of just sneaking up on a few things, right? Like just kind of jumping around a little bit and filling things in with the shapes that I'm most comfortable doing and slowly sneaking up on getting this thing finished. The lines are a lot lighter, like or thinner in this area. It's interesting the way he drew the horn is he, he just wrapped a few lines around it, mostly. And then the tip actually has the contour. It's kind of cool. You pick up on some of these ways that an inker would indicate that by you know, a creative way to not just outline everything, right? You, he's indicating some, maybe like some things tied around it, which reveals the horn, but not drawing the actual horn underneath. And you could totally bring some of that into your drawings with the pencil. It's not like that's only useful for, uh, for an anchor.
<laughs> it looks like I, I, I was deciding if I want to get the eye, start with the eyes or not, and I ended up just making the eyes last. Let's jump into these eyes and see what he's got. So right above that is this cast shadow from something wrapping around the eyes. So a good place to start with eyes is like right in here, right at the corners, because what that does is it, it kind of anchors the eyes and you can judge those two dots based on, you know, the distance between the eyes Right, this distance usually you want to relate it to the nose itself. So, like, is it closer together than the nostrils? Also, how far up are these corners? Then the angle. You know, if one eye is higher than the other, that's gonna make them look like they're lopsided. That's not good. So, the angle between them, the distance between them, and then how high up and down they are compared to the nose. All these things you could just do by focusing on where do these two dots go. And even there, like even if you do focus on those two dots and you put them and you measure them and you really try to get them in the right spot, you still might end up putting them in the wrong spot. It happens all the time. So don't beat yourself up if you don't get the eyes in the right spot. I still do it. I still get it wrong all the time. <laughs> then I have to go back and erase my eyes. Okay, and I think the only thing left is the hair on the right side. And then we can move on to the next one. And I'm gonna actually use the side of my pencil. exactly the same shapes but similar okay I'm happy with that let's move on to the next one so let's do this Conan one put them right here with this one you could see the brush he's using he can get a very very thin tip or he can push a little bit more and, and use the side and you get get that uh, more textured look that you see on the hair on the left side and get really thick strokes and I can do a similar thing with my pencil. See, I have it sharpened like this, pretty long, so when I put it on the side, I can get this sort of thing. And then I can use the tip to get little thin lines like this. And then if I, you can see I've actually worked a little flat plane on the tip there. I'm doing that on purpose. I'm not gonna sharpen my pencil because I actually like that. I'm able to replicate some of his thicker, thin to thick lines with this flat plane I have on the tip of my pencil. 
and then I can use this part as the side or just this tip right here if I want to get a really thin line. So really three types of lines I can get or three planes or parts of the pencil I can use for different lines. If I use the very tip, get a thin line. If I use that flat plane that I said I, I developed, it's a thicker line. And if I use the side, it's a, you know, this sort of deal. All right, so same thing, I'm gonna lightly lay in the shapes. He's also got a very strong little muzzle, a crease in here. It's one thing I really actually like about uh, Robert's drawings is that the way he designs the faces, they just ha all have this similar aesthetic and they just look really cool in my opinion. And, but also his, just, his line quality, his brushmanship is just very interesting, which is why I chose him. Okay, I actually think that's probably enough for my lay-in, other than the eyes. You can see the nose is just a little underneath the cheekbones. The lips. I'm confident now with the lay-in, so I'm gonna jump right in. Start with actually the eyes this time, and then do the hair last. So, I really like this eye, actually both eye shapes are really cool. They're so simple in the way they're indicated. Just have so much emotion. Just get this nice thin to thick right there. And that leads into a few strokes right underneath, like that. A little crease right there. And then very, very subtle, very tiny little indications right there for the actual iris and pupil. to the other side. Another crease at the brow, giving them that furrowed brow look. He's very intense fighting someone. I like how he's bringing the hair shape all the way down, connecting it to the eye so that Things aren't, not too many floating shapes, very spotty. I think I mentioned that in a previous demo where we want to try to connect things together and that's what, what he's doing. It's one strand of hair is coming in, flowing over the brow ridge like that. See, that's where that flat plane comes in. See how thick these strokes are.
It's really fun studying his shapes. There's so there's so much variety in them. They're so loose and dynamic. It's, it's kind of fun trying to replicate them with a pencil. And as I do this, like I'm slowly starting to build up my own visual library of ways to execute things or like how I can design an eye shape or a nose shape. Just slowly over time, you, you just build up these little templates in your, in your mind that you could follow as loosely as you want in that mo in the moment. So you could just put the exact eye shape that you remember doing before or you kind of borrow a little bit of it. But just, you know, that experience of doing various shapes of various features, hundreds, thousands of different ones, builds up that visual library that you can come back to at any moment. But you know, doing just one is not, it's not, you know, you're gonna forget it. You gotta do a lot of these. Not necessarily master studies, but you could look at a photograph and try to design all the shapes, the features in your own way. Okay, so very, very thin lines in here. So if you compare the lines right here to like the lines in the hair, very different line quality. So I'm going to use the tip. Same thing right here. There's a few very thin lines right in the corner of the lip. Right there. up to the nose. I actually really like how he did this cast shadow coming out up the bottom of the nose where it's not like filled in flat. It's got, you can see each line. Okay, so as I come into some of these lines in here, they're clearly just very loosely thrown in there to more get like just a, the flow of the hair and he's got some texture from the paper. And again, he's grouping them together into chunks rather than like a bunch of repeating ones with the same distance between each one. You don't want too much repetition. And he also doesn't have many floating shapes. Just a few occasionally, like right in here, he's got some floaters. Um, but even there, like there's a, some floating ones coming in through here, but they're all connected with a rhythm, right? They all flow this way up into the hair. Right in here, there's a nice, very thin line that gives some structure to that brow. Right, it defines that brow ridge very nicely. It's kind of hard to miss because it looks like it's, or it doesn't look, it's connected to the hair shapes, um, but it's there. It's that subtle little shape that adds so much to the expression. I'm actually kind of squinting at his drawing right now, just because I'm, again, I'm not trying to replicate every exact line in the hair. I'm trying to look for where he's got his darks and just where, which direction they're going. And I'm drawing those same shapes as I feel like he did them. 
like at this point I've drawn enough lines to be able to replicate a similar line in that same style without having to look exactly at the line he drew. Just kind of drawing the same shape he drew. Like in here I'm seeing like a dark mass kind of like in this little area. So just go in there and putting in that dark mass. I, I brought that down much farther than he did. I just noticed, but it's okay. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try to redo it. Still looks like hair. Okay, actually, I think I just finished it and I, it just kind of snuck up on me. Okay guys, so that's it. That's how I would study line quality from an inker. One last thing, I forgot to do it in Jeff's demo, uh, but I would sign it, even my, own, even my own sketchbook, if I'm not posting it anywhere, I would sign it and put like, you know, after Robert De La Torre, just so that like 10 years from now, if I'm going back through my sketchbook and I'm looking at it, I'm like, whoa, what was this? Wow, I did such a cool looking face. What was that? And I might forget that this was even a study after somebody. So just for your own reference or your own memory, you could even try to copy the other person's signature. I've seen that. I want to make sure it's legible. Like, so I'm not going to copy his signature. I'm just going to write his name. There you go. Cool guys, I hope you have fun with this. I love doing these. They're super fun and I always get a really good drawing out of them. So it's a little confidence booster with the help of from a master. All right, I'll see you in the next one.